slides um, on the web page. So I'm going to, um, there's, there are four slides that talk about price ceilings and price floors. I'm going to skip over those um, and come back to them at the, at the, at the end of the set of lectures. Okay, so I've just kind of decided I want to change up the order in which I'm presenting some of the material. You'll see when I get there, but just heads up. Okay. In class, um, last time on Monday, we wrapped up talking about demand and then plowed all the way through supply. We went through, we got a lot done in class on Monday, which I was excited about. Um, and now we're ready to put supply and demand together and talk about market equilibrium. Okay. So um, the main thing to know about equilibrium is that in, when a market is in equilibrium, um, price adjusts to equate the quantity supplied with the quantity demanded. Okay, so the equilibrium price, again, is just the price at which the quantity supplied equals the quantity demanded. And the equilibrium quantity is the quantity bought and sold at the equilibrium price. This is the best understood, I think, when just looking at a picture. So we've got our demand curve, we've got our supply curve, there's a price at, a, at the price of P star. The quantity that consumers demand is exactly equal to the quantity that producers or firms supply. And so P star there is going, be, is going to be our equilibrium price, and Q star here is going to be our equilibrium quantity. So let's talk a little bit about you know why that's the equilibrium price. I mean, it's pretty obvious that um, that this that that's the price that equates the quantity supplied and the quantity demanded. But you know what would happen if equilibrium price were a little bit, for example, higher. So let's suppose that we pick a price up here. So just suppose that that's the price at which this product is selling for. We've got our supply curve, we've got our demand curve. One of the things that hopefully you can see here is that the quantity supplied at that price is greater than the quantity demanded. So whenever the quantity supplied is greater we say that there is excess supply. So if you're a producer and you have produced much stuff and you've got a whole bunch of it sitting around and it's sitting on the shelves of your store and no one is, is buying it, what are you going to start to do? Lower the, cost, the price. Cut prices, all right? You want to sell this stuff. It's not doing you any good sitting on your shelves. You're going to start to cut prices to try and get rid of it. Okay, so excess supply tends to exert this downward pressure on prices. Producers are going to start to cut their prices to try and get their, their goods off, off their hands. And so, again, this is going to, you know, prices are going to start to creep down as producers cut their prices. And they're going to keep cutting their price all the way until they can actually sell all of the units that they have in stock. Okay, the, the, it's not going to do them any good to have this stuff just sitting on a shelf that no one's buying. They're not going to make any money off it. They have to start cutting their prices. Similarly, what happens if we have a price, let's say, below the equilibrium price? We double that. So now what do we have? Now we have that the quantity demanded is greater than the quantity supplied. So this is a situation that I'll call excess demand. <laughs> so if everyone is trying really, really hard to buy something and they can't, you know, just there's not enough of it out there in the market, and they, they can't get their hands on something. Let's say, you know, let's say uh, all of a sudden the bookstore announces that they're going to start selling iPads for ten dollars. Okay. <laughs> um, there is going to be a long line of people standing out, you know, waiting in line for for those iPads. The bookstore is going to figure out, well, maybe I should start increasing the price, okay? Because that means they can charge more for it. And in fact, they, the the bookstore doesn't even have to decide this. The people in line are going to say, I'll pay $20 for it, right? The, the, even these, the, the consumers are going to start bidding up the price because they want to get their hands on this iPad. Um, and so excess demand is going to tend to lead to this, this upward pressure on prices as consumers anxious, for, anxious to get a hold of this product start bidding up the price. 
And that's going to continue to happen all the way until, again, there's no more excess demand. Now, there's some, just to give you guys some extra vocabulary words, um, sometimes excess supply is called a surplus, and sometimes excess demand is also called